Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Neutrino weather for this week, Friday to Thursday, the 14th. And uh, let's delve into it and see what this week brings us in terms of energies. Here we are. Okay, so <clears throat> we start tomorrow and the sun and earth are in the 21st and in the 47th gate. So the 21st gate is a gate of attentiveness. So it is that gate within the solar plexus that is able to express our emotional spirit, our, our awareness of our interconnectedness. Um, and so in, in many ways, it's a very delicate gate. Uh, it's a de very delicate energy as such, you know. So, um, and it's this energy that has to do with, you know, things worth paying attention to. I've always, like, I've, I, I've learned a lot um, from the days I spent in... Uh, in the in, in the entourage so to speak you know in the in the meditation centers or other things that in some way or another had to do with osho now first of all osho had the 22nd gate you know? and in that sense you could see how awareness truth is so graceful you know? so that's that's one of the things that i i obviously deeply enjoyed um there but um, another thing is that I did Tibetan pulsing for a while. I mean, still do. And um, the, but the guy who brought out Tibetan pulsing, his name was Dirash. Um, he would say and point to the importance of learning not to hurt anybody's feelings. And so all these things, they come out of the 22nd gate. Uh, it's, it's much more important or graceful to be able to touch somebody's feelings so that their spirit allows them to transform. Uh, um, look at children, for example. You know, they're, they're so close to truth and they're so close to grace and it's obviously social conditioning and all these things that that start taking us away from being in touch with this energy of grace of expression of our truth of our being of our of of the equanimous positioning towards you know the emotional nature of life so obviously this gate goes together with the 47th gate in the earth. And so the 47th gate in the earth is a gate, you know, it's always interesting, I find, to look at the, the general description of the hexagram in the heading. And so here it says a restrictive and adverse state as a result of internal weakness or external strength or both. So this this conditioning that is there is going to be there for the whole week. This conditioning is saying like, oh no, you know, I can't with life, inner weakness. It's too much for me. You know, it, it's, it's too heavy. And another side says, oh no, 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 that's way too much. Like, oh my God, how the hell am I, am I supposed to deal with that? So external strength. And usually it's both. You know? So this is a, this is um, um, an energy in the head center, uh, sorry, in the Ajna center, that kind of like, you know, it, it imbues us with the capacity to mentally make sense out of life. Now, that's an exercise that is actually much more an exercise in um, 
being able to agree on looking at life in a certain way together with others. And it's not so much about trying to make sense out of one's own life. That's in some way or another, is something that you know human design puts forward, but talking about Osho, that's what he also put forward. You know, life doesn't need sense. Life doesn't need purpose. Life is enough unto itself. So that's where the grace sits. And so obviously we have a week where um, those energies are going to go, you know, through all the different lines. And it's both an exercise or an opportunity to touch upon one's own, you know, grace, to feel it, to, 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 you know, to basically tap into oneself, you know? And on the other hand, it's an opportunity or a conditioning that, you know, taps so much what is really felt and making us, you know, seem like life is a burden, you know? And so this week, that's obviously a big, huge heads up. You know? Don't make your life a burden uh, uh, by looking at it in an internally weak or externally heavy way. You know? Life, you know, every moment is somehow beyond ourselves. And that's you know, something to ponder upon. Okay, so that's kind of like the general theme of the week. We move. Let's have a look at Saturday. Saturday, you know, one of those things I... Saturday, the the the, the earth huh, and the moon... Uh, sorry, the earth and, the, and the, um, the sun and the earth are in the third line. Huh? So that's an adaptation line. And... Um, you can see here in the 47 gate you know, that in that in that trial and error of trying you know, to make sense when there's too much mind you know, we can see that there is an extreme difficulty in realizing one's self-worth so that's not necessarily comfortable now these two gates they are part of an incarnation cross uh, in human design called the cross of rulership. And obviously, if you want to see the a, a very good manifestation of the socio-economical or cultural expressions of the cross of rulership, I definitely uh, suggest you to watch a movie called Elizabeth uh, it's on Queen Elizabeth's um, life, you know, where it's a very famous actress. I forgot the one who plays in uh, the one who plays in the Lord of the Rings. Anyway, she's the Queen of the Elves. There, she's another queen, and she she that that movie shows us so clearly those four different facets of being a ruler, you know, which obviously has to do with being there in some way or another as an expression of, of the needs of the people. And then it's there in terms of the intricacies of court that you see very well in that in that um, movie. And, and then there is love or romance and oppression. And you know, 22 and 47 are romance and oppression. But in other side, a more, a more awareness oriented side of the 2343 is coming from a cross of rulership. Osho was a cross of rulership and the way that he put it forward was, you know, we're all here to be the emperors of our own lives. And um, yeah, I think that these days, that's something very important to remember. However oppressive the... Um, the outside energetic conditioning and the weather seems to be, we are always the emperors of our own life. You know, we're always the ones and the only ones who are able to witness the life that we've been given so that 
our awareness, which is individual, can grow and flower. So never forget that. We're never, ever, ever, however harsh and harsh our circumstances can be, necessarily a victim of it. Now, the weather, as you see, stays very oriented towards the solar plexus system. So there is a lot of emphasis on um, yeah, emotional frequencies and emotional frequencies that are not necessarily that easy. There is a conjunction between Mercury and Neptune and that conjunction really talks about the darkness that can come about in uh, moving through in experience, in moving and going into zones that we've never been before. You know? And obviously, you know, here you see it come together with Venus in the 30th gate that talks about the difficulty or the positive and negative feelings that come with accepting what is. And then there is this revolutionary paste coming forward through Mars in the 49th gate. So obviously anybody, I mean, I just look at my own design. I have the 19, the 12 and the 35. I tap into this weather directly. So it's going to be an exercise in... Um, yeah, coming to learning to be sensitive and not get so easily overpowered by the Martian immature cutting off kind of energy in the 49. Because my needs are not met or uh, because I don't, you know, get what I need. Um, and then it will obviously be uh, an exercise in... In, in some way or another through the 1222, which is a channel of openness, you know, daring to go deeper in um, the expression and the exploration of my spirit, of my, my, my learning to become more emotionally aware and going through experiences that I've in some way or another that are new or that are at least very revealing because they move me from you know, they move me through inexperience. They move me through crisis in a way. So that's an opportunity that obviously lays out for anybody that taps into this weather. You know? And it's definitely a heads up. Now, interestingly, um, from Saturday onwards, all the way till Sunday, Monday, all the way till Monday, or even further. You know, so all the way till the 12th, which is Tuesday. All the way to the 12th, we get this energy coming forward in the weather that has to do with needing to be first. Now, needing to be first here on Monday or on the 12th, which is, let me have a look just quickly, the 12th is uh, Tuesday. So, you know, all the way till Tuesday, There is this energy coming forward, this design coming forward that has to do with needing to be first and there is a gate of control sitting in the moon. So, and then the 49th gate goes into the third line. Uh, you know, there's some slight shifts also in the lines over here. Um, and this needing to be first, now it can so easily trigger us in our egoic stance in life, you know, meaning me first, so, and you second. Huh? So there is a lot of gall that can come out and a lot of stupidity that can come out of this channel, you know? because if we lose touch, with the interconnectedness of all life, then this is the most idiotic and, and, and egoic stance that we can have. So that's something to take into account and see how it plays out. Um, and the other side of it is obviously that 
this channel, I mean, the longer I have been observing it in my life, the more I'm in awe, actually, by the fact that basically the 51st gate where the where the nodes are, you know, where the nodes are, the 51st gate talks about, I'll show it to you like this, it's easier. The 51st gate, the gate talks about the ability to respond to disorder and shock through recognition and adaptation. You know, so the ability to respond to disorder and shock through recognition and adaptation, it says if somebody would come in or somebody from the audience would say, uh, Dirk, what a bunch of bullshit are you talking about? And I would go like, oh shit, I don't know. I, uh, I would kind of completely lose my center. It would come in as something that brings disorder into my system, shock into my system, and actually I might not be able to adapt to it. And so this, this, um, this energy imbues our heart, our courage to learn to adapt to it. And that can just be, listen, I'm just trying the best I can and, and that's what I have to offer. Like, it can just be that. But when this weather is there and this conditioning is there, first of all, we all have a tendency and this weather of the 30, of the 51st gate in shock is going to be there all the way till May. So, is it, it pushes on the ego. It pushes on the thing that says, well, fuck you. Okay? So... It it kind of this you know it's Aryan it's bellicose it's there's a warrior frequency in it somehow, and when that energy is present in a person or that energy is present in the weather, we tend to filter everything in a shocking way. We're more predisposed somehow to have to 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 think that we have to defend our terrain. You know? that mm, yeah, everything comes in and everything is experienced in some way or another or filtered in some way or another through something that says, hey, you know, uh, can I adapt to this? Can Do I have the ability to respond to this in a way that doesn't make me lose my center? So put this into the mix and... And you get to see like there is an enormously volatile emotional weather presenting itself. And then there is this energy that can, on the one hand, bring forward an egoic me first kind of frequency or a frequency that says, hey, actually, I can stay centered in myself and it's by being centered in my own innocence and in my own childlikeness, in my own individuality, that I tap into the interconnectedness with everything and everybody that is around me. So this is obviously weather that is inviting us to learn to go in, to learn to go into... Uh, the innocence and the centeredness of our hearts. And <clears throat> we move on. And by the way, um, yeah, the um, the energy in um, Neptune, so sorry, in Pluto is moving this week. No, so Pluto is actually also bringing us forward the necessity, the law of going deep into the intelligence of our bodies. Now, the second gate is the most yin gate of all. And so the second gate brings that opportunity to tap into the energy that has to do you know, with the keys that lay inside of us in order to um, you know, navigate life on the other hand obviously um yeah the the conditioning of the second gate can be to disregard uh, the intelligence of our bodies and tap into 
quick decisions and move quickly and come to uh, come to quick swift um uh, shocking affirmations of an egoic stance in a very volatile emotional weather so yeah we'll look at that maybe next week a little bit more in detail what goes on with that second gate um and then we see that towards the end of the week you know wednesday and thursday the sun and the earth are going into the 36 and the 6 so they're going the weather is moving towards crisis and friction so from a design perspective crisis and friction they clearly point towards the opportunities for growth in friction and the, and the, and the opportunities for progress through um you know, moving from uh, moving through in experience and through the crisis that it can bring along so um yeah you know something to take into account this week i would pay attention uh towards not like you know try to tap into your own spirit as much as you can and obviously through honoring your personal individual stance in life and um yeah don't let life bur feel like a burden so that you know slowly slowly towards the end of the week towards wednesday and thursday there is this capacity to move through and into something new huh? to move through you know like to 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 have the 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 spirit somehow to go into further awareness huh? i was thinking maybe next week i'll do the design of uh, albert einstein because he had his uh, sun and earth in the 36 6 so here's a guy that was you know having the intelligence to go deeper into you know what life is really really about um and we see that on wednesday and thursday there is um yeah the moon is bringing the 360 for about 12 hours so you know the 360 can can bring forward a certain certain mutation certain change you know to this from my perspective rather rather heavy plutonian weather for the moment that you know can talk about dogmatic principled carefully reasoned understanding that is uncompromising in severity and often coldly brutal in operation i mean i don't want to get into politics but it's obvious that that frequency is you know right now in the air and that there are plutonian uh plutonian whiffs to it that's also in the air and so that can lead to an unbearable and chronic stance chronically depressive stance is harsh and difficult to overcome it especially if we stay so rigid and so you know towards uh, wednesday and thursday there is this possibility in some way or another that you know even though difficult at the beginning maybe there's some kind of a transcendence of that positioning so it's it's also whether that can again you know uh, help us to to empower our individual stance our individual pulse in life no? um so yeah that's that's what i had to share for this week these were my reflections or ponderings on the weather i hope you enjoy them and uh, we'll see each other next week bye bye